excited to say making this this morning debut. It's John Tanaka. John, good to have you with us. Good, good to morning, be here. John. Morning. How's it going? Very good. Yeah. What are you making for us today, then? So it's going to be a really vibrant winter dish. It's going to be pan-fried sea bream with a winter minestrone. Sounds oh, great. Oh, John, speaking our language. But it's really easy to make. And once all the vegetables are prepped like this, it takes around seven minutes to cook. What? So first thing I want to do is get this piece of sea bream straight into the pan, skin side down. Now, I've scored the skin Ooh. because... On a fish, the best part is the crispy skin. I agree, yes. I agree. You've got to get that right, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Exactly. So I'm just going to wash my I notice you put, you put a little bit of salt on top of the fish as well. Yep, need to season the fish. And I've put it in a cold pan. Now, the reason I'm doing that is... Stop messing yeah, with my mind now, John. What are you doing? It's all about the I'm crispy skin. I'm always told hot, hot pan for fish. So what's going on? So if I was to put the, the uh, fish straight into a hot pan, the skin contracts and it curls oh. and, and prevents it from sitting flat against the pan. And I want it to sit flat because that way I got a crisp skin oh, all the, the way. Oh, is that the trick? Yeah, that's one of the a tricks. You're doing it wrong pan. all this time. Me too. I just had hot, hot oil and straight away started frying it. And to score it, you just need a good sharp knife, right? Exactly. And does yeah. that just get that lovely, the oil and the salt, like, into the fish? No. The, is that the, the other reason thing why is you score? Also, by scoring it, it keeps it nice and flat. Oh, it doesn't curl. Little yeah. tricks, you say. Little tricks. I love sea bream, John. It's one of my favourite fishes. It's it is. A, such a lovely, like the two fillets are so. Like, everyone like sea bass is obviously such a great fish and it's so popular. But do you like sea bream? Oh, I love it. Yeah. I right love there. fish. Full stop. I love it. I just don't eat enough of it. Yeah. I don't like cooking it at home. Yeah. Mainly because of the smell. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons that people find it slightly intimidating to cook fish at home is telling when fish is cooked properly. Yeah. You have a problem with that? A little bit. Yeah. Sometimes I go over, sometimes I go under. And there's a really simple trick to that, and I'll show you. And all you need to tell when fish is cooked perfectly is one of these. It's a cocktail stick. Yeah, and what do you do? So, if you insert the cocktail stick straight into raw fish, just gently, the fish will put resistance to the cocktail stick. Oh. As it cooks, that resistance disappears. So, you watch your fish, you can tell by looking at it, around the edge is starting to go white, and that's cooking. In the centre, it's opaque. Once you flip it, you, you, you don't have that visual guide. Cocktail stick, straight in. If it slides in and you feel this a little bit of resistance uh -huh. in the middle, you leave it for another minute and then try it again. As soon as it slides in, it's perfectly cooked. So, as soon as there's no resistance exactly. with the cocktail stick, you're done. That's yeah. good, isn't it? Oh, this is great. It's like Home Ec 101 <laughs> over here. <laughs> and it works every time with any fish, apart from ones which are on the bone. Yeah. Brilliant. OK. So what are, you, what are you doing now, John? What's going so on? So in there, I put some chicken stock, I put some anchovies, sun-dried tomatoes, mm -hmm. cannellini beans. And the base of that is shallots, celery and carrots, sweated off in olive oil. So this lovely Italian, Frenchy, almost kind of like a uh, soup like going on. Exactly, yeah. And it's kind of building on the flavours. You know, you've got your vegetables to begin with, and then you add your white wine, adds a little bit of acidity, then the stock. It's and then so light. It just, it just, it, it tastes like it's doing you good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those dishes where you, when you uh, spoon it, you're like, oh, hang on a minute. It's, it's all the just, greenery, it's just so isn't it? so hearty, isn't it? Yeah, so nice. And you mm. can use whatever vegetables that's in season. You know, it's only a few weeks till spring, and then you're going to have asparagus and peas oh, yeah. and broad beans, and you can do exactly the same recipe and just substitute, you know, the kale, mm, yeah. the tablo nero and the carrots with those so spring It's really versatile meal, this is, really. It is. Mm. It's super so nice. I haven't even started, tried, tried the fish yet. Well, so, try it, because, <laughs> seriously, it's very delicious. Yeah. It's lovely. So I'm going to finish the minestrone with a classic pesto. So basil, parmesan, garlic, some toasted pine nuts, touch of olive oil, and I'm going to add a tablespoon to the minestrone right at the end. Right. Okay. What does that do exactly? What does the minestrone? What does the pesto give to the minestrone? Flavour. Yeah, it gives. But there's so it much flavour in here already. So is it? Just... That kind of add, like, little bit of cheesiness or...? Yeah, the cheese, the basil, the toasted pine nuts just adds kind of more layers of flavour. And, Joe, because my wife's um, allergic to nuts, so, so she struggles with, obviously struggles with pine nuts. I can't yeah. do pine nuts for her. So I kind of 
sometimes just take the pineapples out of the pesto when I'm, if I cook pesto. Is that all right, or can I, can I yeah. substitute it with anything else? Uh, yeah, just take it out. It's no problem at all. Take it out. Yeah. That's it. That's all. Yeah, yeah. This is like a really nice dish, you know, like in a, like a spring day yeah. or a hot summer's day, because it's just so light and lovely. Yeah. It's and really you don't nice. have to use sea bream. You can use salmon, cod, mackerel. All those different fish will work with this recipe. It also feels like one of those dishes that you could eat, like, even when the weather's, like, turning and the weather's good. Yeah. You'd still, you know, you can serve this in the summer and it wouldn't be so out. So nice. Place. But you know how... Um, so I came back from holidays, and you know how yeah. sometimes when you see the... You, you have a day where you go, hang on a second, it's turning. It feels like more like spring today yes. than it did than, than winter yesterday. Yeah, you have those little days, don't like, you? Like, like two days ago, yeah. Oh. Nice. So, I've added a tablespoon of pesto to the minestrone, and that goes straight into... And John, this is what you specialise in in your restaurant, this kind of, these kind of Mediterranean vibes, is that right? Yeah, so my restaurant, the ninth, it's French Mediterranean. So all the kind of, the basic recipes are classic French, but it has Mediterranean influences. So yeah. the flavours are really fresh and vibrant and, yeah, easy to so eat. So good. So good. So, beautiful, crispy sea bream goes straight on the top. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, and what is it? That. What an absolutely, what a belter of a debut. Oh, hey? thank you so Come much. Come on. That is Thanks, delicious. John. Look at that. Perfect. Come back immediately. <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, for details of today's recipes and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free This Morning app.